It was a policy announced by the Attorney General of this country that families were going to be separated. That was a policy. He did not say we're going to start enforcing a law. The AG memo that was issued directed all U.S. attorney offices along the southwest border to prosecute all adults who were referred for prosecution. That's a policy. But that is a policy. Not as you described it. Madam Secretary, it wasn't about that is a policy. Does it differ from the cages you put your dogs in when you let them stay outside? Is it, a, is it different? It, it, yes. In what sense? Uh, it's larger. It has facilities. Uh, it provides room to sit, to stand, to lay down. So did my dog's cage. Now, I've seen the cages. I just want you to admit that the cages exist. Sir, they're not cages. But they were. They are. And it's about to get worse. That was ousted Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen last month. Joining our conversation, Mike Murphy, Republican strategist and former campaign advisor to Bush, Romney and McCain, and Jason Johnson, politics editor for The Root. I guess what I'm grappling with today are, 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 are two things that I just find galling. One, that she was any sort of guardrail. She made those policies happen. She was his go-to gal on the most on, on immigration policy so inhumane. Laura Bush, who is so reluctant to speak out about anything, liken them to Japanese internment camps. And the news is, it's going to get worse. Well, yeah, because it's going to be Stephen Miller. And, and, and his, his, his sort of white nationalist tendencies are really obvious. You can't even dress that up as I was just doing what I was told. I mean, he goes back to relationships with Richard Spencer and, and the alt-right in several different areas. But, but I think even more disturbing is, is this idea that Nielsen, it wasn't just, she was under no circumstances fighting against this administration. She was just trying to find ways to smooth it down and cover it with sugar and make it okay. And that's what makes it so disgusting, that you have so many people who otherwise seem like perfectly reasonable bureaucrats are capable of engaging in the most disgusting despicable, inhumane, human rights abusing behaviors as possible, all under the justification of doing what this president wants. And it will get worse. I miss John McCain for a lot of reasons, but mostly because of the bipartisan deal he worked out with Ted Kennedy when George W. Bush was president for comprehensive immigration reform. And it wasn't because he was a squish, and it wasn't because Ted Kennedy was his friend. It was because comprehensive immigration reform yeah. is the only one that actually has any shot of stopping illegal immigration. Yeah, look, I miss half the Republicans senators. It used to be four and are now Well, they just had protection. lobotomies. I mean, yeah. they're still there. No, no, right? it, it's tribal. We, you know, it, that's the problem with our politics now. They, they like the jobs they have. They're afraid of their primary voters, so they put on blinders, complain privately about it, and keep marching. Now, look, I, I'm with, I guess, kind of the unsurprising consensus here. I don't give her any... It's interesting. Nielsen has such a professional stain on her that even being fired by Donald Trump doesn't help. You know, that, yeah. that's an accomplishment. <laughs> uh, but what worries me even more than the outrage I share about where our immigration policy might go with some of the knuckleheads in the White House who may be driving it through the essential governing tool of the Trump White House, which is to be an exceptionally good yes man and just reinforce the toddler tendencies around the clock. It's interesting. The president is a toddler who can fire his parents when you say no. So we have this kind of auction of people trying to appease his craziest impulses. But, but beyond that, DHS is an interesting bureaucratic animal. It was created to force coordination between these feuding agencies that all have very important jobs to keep us safe. Yeah. So you need a strong master bureaucrat atop of that thing to run the whip, and that's all gone now. So instead, it's a competition between all these acting secretaries to who can impress the president or certain staffers by out yahooing the other, which is exactly the wrong set of incentives you need there to do the job of keeping us safe. I've spent too much time in the dog park. I've got a dog park analogy in my head. I'm going to leave it in my head. Um, uh, Heidi, I want to play for you um, uh, another, I think, low point, not just in Nielsen's tenure, but uh, I think when history is told in, in, in the history of this White House, Nielsen not able to remember how many human beings. Um, well, let's just watch. As you sit here today, you do not know how many human beings have died while in the custody of the department that you lead. And you, in preparation for today's hearing, you didn't ascertain that number, but you don't know it today? I, I don't have an exact figure for you. Do you have a rough idea? Uh, sir, what I can tell you I'm is... I'm talking about people who have died in your custody. You don't have the number? And again, Heidi, <laughs> we're to believe that she has been ousted because Donald Trump wants that agency to toughen up. I, again, what does that look like? 
You know, Nicole, I think you and I are going to be old ladies sitting in our rocking chairs, and there's still going to be stories coming out about what's happening right now at the border and the humanitarian angle of how these people are being treated. We, we've seen the stories come out steadily, uh, but there's more there. We're hearing about pregnant women, women giving birth to stillborn children because they won't release pregnant women. Um, we're hearing that it's going to take up to two years for a lot of these children who were ripped from their parents to be reunited if they are ever reunited. Some of them may have even been adopted out, uh, never to be reunited with their parents again. And so, yes, this is, she is the face of that, and nothing is going to change that. Not not the firing uh, or, or, or her trying to redeem herself in whatever subsequent role she takes on, but it's also, you know, this, a stain on this administration. And I think we are all struggling right now to understand what something worse than that is going to look like. Um, if, in fact, this president is prepared to now double down on the policy that has failed so miserably at stopping this humanitarian crisis. And I don't think it can be said enough to explain to people how this is different from the type of uh, immigration that illegal, whatever undocumented, that we've seen in the past, which was primarily young Mexican men coming here in generations past and decades past seeking work, whereas these are families fleeing violence, uh, fleeing uh, drug kingpins, um, and feeling, uh, fleeing drought in horrible conditions. Matt Miller, it was always going to catch up with us to have a president as ignorant as this one. Here he is on um, what asylum is. The asylum program is a scam. Some of the roughest people you've ever seen, people that look like they should be fighting for the UFC. They read a, a little page given by lawyers that are all over the place. You know, the lawyers. They tell them what to say. You look at this guy, you say, wow, that's a tough cookie. I am very fearful for my life. <laughs> In the history of this country, asylum seekers have also included victims of civil wars, babies, pregnant women, soldiers. I mean, I, I, it's, 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 it's unfathomable. You know, when I watched that clip and the, and the clip of Secretary Nielsen failing to remember how many people died, how many children died in, in, in her department's custody, uh, I'm really just filled with shame as an American. The same sh sense of shame I felt during the, se the family separation uh, event last year. You know, it is, a, it is a stain certainly on the administration. It's a, a stain on all the people who carried out that policy, but it is a stain on our entire country. And it is a stain that's not over. It's not over just because the family separation policy ended last year. The Justice Department just told a federal court on Friday. Friday that it will be two years before they can account for all of the people that were separated as a result of that policy. Two years before they'll even be able to say how many people were affected. We may ne we still don't know and we may never know how many children were orphaned as a result of that policy. The the stain that they that President Trump and Secretary Nielsen put on our country through implementing that policy will, will never leave us. And I shudder to think what the next version of that, what family separation 2.0 and whatever else the president comes up with will look like because he, 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 he doesn't have the patience or the willingness to sit down and actually understand immigration policy and come up with something that would work, be willing to actually work with, comp with Congress, take a little political risk. He's the, the one person that could do it. He has such credibility with the right on this issue and come up with a compromise policy. He's never willing to do that. So instead, I fear we're going to get something that looks like it looks even worse than the humanitarian disaster we saw last year. After the break, at least one person seems to have an idea about just how bad the Mueller report will be.